Welcome everybody to Unfiltered. Pastor David, welcome. Thank you, John. And thank you for joining us every every Tuesday and Thursday. That's why I hired you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I was thinking about it. If you weren't here, we wouldn't have Unfiltered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Today, Pastor, I wanted to uh, get your feedback on a couple of different things. Primarily one thing that happened this last, just re very recently, and, and how the church is to respond to something like this. Uh, as we know, well, if you haven't known, uh, there was the, the the Dodger Stadium had, or the Dodgers had rejected uh, having Pride Night, which included the LBGTQ and all the the rest, and then rescinded on that. And in the midst of that time, there was a, uh, I don't know how old or how new, the Sisters of Indulgence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't know if I'm even referencing them correctly. I think it's the Sisters of Perpetual, Perpetual Indulgence. Perpetual Indulgence, yes. And in in their uh, in their protest of not being invited to Dodger Stadium, they openly demonstrated straight mockery of our Lord and Savior. And they have Jesus on a cross and somebody dancing inappropriately on that cross. And here we are as Christians, we're seeing these things, and it's so blatant in our faces. How does the church respond? to stuff like this. Well, you know, I, I think that there are times that we need to voice our opinions, obviously. We need to make our our uh, feelings concerning those things known. It, uh, it, I find it very interesting that it is Christ that they mock. Now, these individuals are in need of Jesus Christ. They, they need the Lord. They need forgiveness of sin, even though they don't acknowledge they have it. But to be honest with you, I, I consider them to be modern-day modern-day people of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what they are. They have no conscience. Their conscience is seared. They're slaves to sin. And um, they have no, no problem at all mocking us. But, bro, it's been this way for a long time. Yeah. This, this is something, I hope I can say this quickly because it's something I consider. Um, years ago, years ago, when the women's liberation movement came in and began to say, we don't need men, we are equal to men, we don't, we, don't, we don't really need them at all. Even to this day, they're saying things like, we really don't need them other than perhaps for the sperm so that we can have children. So there is, there is such a, uh, a re, uh, lack of regard for men first. And uh, so what happens is, is the women begin to cry out, we're equal to men in this and that, and then it becomes we need equity, and before you know it, what we end up with is the mockery of men, the rejection of men, the rejection of uh, male leadership authority or anything like that, and you end up with broken homes and broken families and just a failure to be able to, to, um, to live with, a, with a, a love and concern for another human being, a male, and and you end up with all of these broken people. And I, I would say it in, in church, I, I said, you know, this, these are the kinds of things that are gonna lead us to a disruption of the moral, moral morality of society. So it begins with the breaking up of the home and, and the traditional roles of, of men and women. It, it flows into um, the way people raise their children and now the absence of, uh, of fathers in so many homes and so many communities, 80% plus uh, of the children being born are being born to unwed moms. So you have women, if they are raising their children, uh, trying to play the role of both a man mm -hmm. and a woman. And then there's the absence of the mother if she's working. And there's so many sociological things going on right now that you end up with, with boys who don't know what a boy is and girls who don't know what a girl is. And, and I see all of these things working together for one thing, and that's a rejection of biblical morals and, and, and biblical authority and, and the traditional roles of men and women. And it all seems to blend together into a rejection. And especially a rejection of uh, the Christian faith that has fed all of these different roles and and things in our society for, for, for the centuries that we as uh, Americans have existed. And so Christianity has taken the, the brunt of the, of the hatred and rejection. I find it interesting, John, that these 
women, these men who pretend to be women, these sisters of perpetual indulgence, are not saying anything about uh, Muhammad now, are they? You know, why wouldn't they? Because, um, because they wouldn't survive. <laughs> you know, they, 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 there would be an uproar and a, there would be a, re, uh, a rejection that would be very physical and they know that. So we're the safe ones to pick on because we've been taught to turn the other cheek and, and we've been taught to love our enemies. And, and so our approach to those things is different. And we also know that the wrath of man doesn't produce the righteousness of God. We understand that, um, that it's a spiritual war and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty in God. And because of that, the church has kind of failed, we as a, a body, to, to be able to, to show our disapproval of this in a way that is even noticed because we don't, we don't uh, riot, mm -hmm. we, we don't commit acts of violence, and th though there, <laughs> there are those who say that we do. It's funny how that when the Roe v. Wade uh, was overturned, it's funny how, how news of that actually leaked out prior to its being announced. And, uh, you know, and then people were, people were uh, reacting to it, uh, you know, with violence, you know, and, uh, and that was acceptable, right? And so what we have today is just unequal treatment under law. And so Christians have a tendency of just being quiet about it and saying, you know, I don't know what to do about this, Lord, because everything is arrayed against us. Mm -hmm. You know, the press isn't calling us or calling churches and saying, what do you think about this? Because the press, by and large, seems to agree with it. When you have owners of the Dodgers who are willing to, to on the one hand, say this is wrong and therefore we won't do it, and then just a few voices cry out and say, oh, you look at you, you're a bigot. And then they, they once again have it. And then the angels mm -hmm. of all people, you know, saying, well, these people are wrong and we will host this. You've given evil license and that's what's happened, John. And so what do we do? Well, I think we need to make our voices known. It isn't the, the, the players on the Dodgers. That's their job. Right. You know, it's, it's the people who run the show there who... Who, who for whatever cost want to have a high ranking on a tolerance meter. Mm. Look at us, you know, and they want to normalize what is perverted. Homosexuality, and especially in the way it's being presented, is a perversion. The Bible refers to it in that way, and um, people don't want to hear that word, but that's what it's called. They're referred to as perverted persons in Scripture because God didn't create a man and, a, and another man to have relationships. All you need to do is put two men on the same island and when they die, the island's barren again. You know, you put a man and a woman, they have the potential to have children because it demonstrates very, very closely and clearly that, uh, that we have the ability to um, procreate because that's how we were designed. But it's, it's all against, it's against logic, it's against morality and all, and I, I think that uh, people should make their voices heard to the Dodger organization and the Angel organization, and I, I, I don't believe in making threats and all of that. That, that does no good, and it only gives people a, an opportunity to be hardened in their, in their opinions concerning us, but we most certainly need to make our voices known, and if that means sending an email to the Dodgers organization and saying, I want you to know how disappointed I am with you. Listen, my, my dad, one of my earliest and best memories of my father and me is when the Dodgers moved here mm -hmm. back in 59 and they used to play at the Coliseum. And my dad took me to a baseball game where I saw Gil Hodges and some of those, those, those Dodgers of that era, you know, Larry Sherry, Don Drysdale, you know, they're, they're, I grew up with the Dodgers. My dad's team was the Dodgers, they became mine. So this is greatly disappointed, it, disappointing to me. It, it's, you know, but uh, again, you know, um, Clayton Kershaw, once again, has made a statement, we need to get the Christian night back and all. And, you know, that's nice to at least acknowledge that we're here. But to take a perverted group of people and to think that I would want to be around them, you know, it's not that I, I, I can't be. I mean, I'm, I'm around people who are perverse all the time, of course. <laughs> but, you know, the idea that we celebrate that 
is something that we need to be, uh, the church needs to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to once again reawaken to the fact that they're lost. They need the Lord. They're, they're, they're miserable people. I've known more than one homosexual in my life. And they're very, very miserable. They're, they're hurt and lost. And what they've been trying to do is become accepted uh, in their perversion. And it just doesn't work, John. And yeah. so what we need to do, I think, is make our, make our voices heard in one way or another. And Pastor, with uh, with these times of getting darker, is it going to get darker? Of course it is. You know, it's you know, evil men shall wax worse and worse. Paul said, and yes, and the church is losing much of its uh, its savor. And Jesus said, when it does, in a, and it loses its saltiness, it's no good other than to be thrown out and trodden by men. So I, I do believe that we need to make our our voices heard, whether it means um, writing. You know, it doesn't hurt to write to the Dodger organization and say, I just want you to know that I'm, uh, I'm very disappointed in your organization for doing something like this. And I want you to know, as a Dodger fan for all these years, um, you're taking a, a turn for the worse. Yes. I was looking at that, the stomach, much little bit of the video I could watch. And one day they're going to be standing before Christ. And uh, well, that's another different topic, yeah. but I just wanted to... Uh, just get your feedback on that and that we're just stand up and make a voice. Well, I think we need to be vocal about it. Yes. Well, Pastor, thank you so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. Do want to remind you, uh, men, this Saturday we have our men's conference. It starts at 8 a.m. if you purchased your breakfast ticket. At 9 a.m. we'll go into the sanctuary and have worship. And we're going to have a good time. We have quite a number of guys that are coming out. And we're going to have a steak breakfast. We're going to have Amen. worship, be fed in God's word. And I'm really looking forward to it. Amen. And then we have our time to, uh, tomorrow evening, Wednesday, which is Wednesday evening, our 7 o'clock services. I invite you guys to come on out. Pastor, you're still taking us through Romans. It'll be, be a while. <laughs> but it's been a good study. It's been really rich. And uh, and want to invite you guys to come out and join us. And then we have our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 10.45. Look forward for you guys to come out and join us. It's always a great opportunity to invite your friends and family Amen. to worship with the Lord and hear God's word. So we look forward to seeing you. Pastor David, thank you again for joining us. Thank you guys for tuning in and God bless you.